Hi, my name's Michelle, and this is Jiggery Pokery, and I'm here with Gavin. I thought it was Jiggery Thiggery. No, it's Jiggery Pokery. <sighs> I still don't know how to spell he's, it. He's not a very good Doctor Who fan. No, I'm, I'm a new Doctor Who fan. Oh, There's that's a complete okay. difference. It's to all that. right. <laughs> you have a wonderful journey ahead of you. Well, I, I've watched all the reboot on. That's good. But what? Do we, okay, so what is? But we're not here to talk about Doctor Pokery. Who. We're here to talk about making things. Ooh, I like making. I things. I love to make things. I've been making things ever since I was a little kid, and uh, I, I'm a cosplayer. And uh, uh, when I moved here to Austin, I found this really great place called ATX Hackerspace, which is a place where I pay. Sixty dollars a month, and I have space to spray paint and and use tools, and Not it's like great. Not like hacking the computers, because hacker space. Well, be... hacker is as in the original like version of the word, where hacking something means you know either fixing something or repurposing something or making it work better by putting two things together that weren't nor normally put together. Yeah, you know I was going to make this easy on you. Yeah, of course. <laughs> All right, so what are we doing today? What Just we're doing today. Very first episode, what are we doing? Very first episode, we're going to talk about painting, a couple of painting techniques. Uh, so I'm a big fan of the Fallout uh, series of video games, as you can probably tell by my, my painting attire. I'm wearing Dad's jumpsuit. And uh, so... Um, in a move, uh, I lost my nuka grenade, which is a bad thing to lose. But uh, so we're going to make a new one. Mm. So first, we're going to show a picture of uh, my old nuka grenade. Okay. Nice. Yeah, I, I did a pretty good job on that. So uh, now we have this wonderful empty can that smells a bit of coconut, and uh, we're going to make Better it. Better than beans. We're going to. Uh, we're going to, to transform it into the base for a nuka grenade. So we're going to talk a little bit about uh, painting this can and different techniques that you can use to make it look rusty, even though it's actually quite clean. So the first thing that you want to do is to research rust and what rust looks like from far away and from close up. And the thing about rust is that it's got texture, several different colors. Mm -hmm. There's some browns. There's some yellows. There's some oranges. And, and it, it's also got texture. So if you go to... Um, anywhere that sells uh, spray paint, there are some really great uh, spray paints that come in textures and in different colors. So, oh. so, it, so it's going to feel like it does on the cap. So it's going to feel like it does on the cap. So as you can see here on this cap, there's a lot of texture. There's three colors. Of this one, there's there's uh, also three colors, but there's slightly less texture. It feels like sandpaper. It feels like sandpaper. Um, and so what you want to look for is multicolor or tricolor or or two color uh, textured. You want to uh -huh. look for that on the on the on the bottle. And they run about five dollars a can, uh, depending on where you go. Another really great textured paint that you can get is called hammered. And mm. this is uh, I, I'm not sure how well the camera's going to pick this up, but this uh, it dry it goes on like any other. Uh, color, but when it dries, it gets this mottled look. It, it it darkens in some places and gets lighter in others, and it has this wonderful texture. Um, I use this uh, to spray paint like toy swords uh, if they're supposed to be cruddy old, like I did like a zombie pirate once, and uh -huh. so I I used uh, this is called hammered. This is that's what the not to be confused with drunk. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, don't, yeah, friends don't let friends drunk and drink and drunken and spray. Drunken and spray, man. Drunken like... spray. Our next show here on Fanboy TV, drunken <laughs> spray. So, um, and then, and then, of course, we're gonna go to any craft store, big box store that has a craft section, and get some craft paint. And so, here are a couple of colors that I got um, that so kind of represent the, some of the different uh, shades that you get uh, when you uh, when you look at at rust. rust. So our can, as you can see, our can is very shiny and new. Ooh, and uh, shiny. Yes, but it's bad in this case because a nuclear grenade is made out of an, a crappy old tin can. And so what I did was I opened it up just a little bit to pour out the, uh, the coconut uh, milk that was inside. I recommend... Sweet juice of life. If, <laughs> I recommend if you're going to, if you're going to do this, uh, use something that isn't chunky. Get some, you know, chicken broth or something like that. And this one had a had a peel back top, so I only peeled it back a little bit uh, so that it would come out. And then, uh, you know, and then or use a church key, uh, which is a, a particular yeah. type of of can opener. And then you can just empty out the stuff, and the bottom will be intact, and it'll just it just looks better that way, I think. So in order to, um, in order to make this the underneath of the can look a little bit less. Uh, uh, new and pretty. 
No, it's got it's got to be rigid. Otherwise, it's not going to hold the the nuke or grenade no, components. I mean the ridges. Oh, the ridges. <laughs> They're ridged for yeah. Anyway, <laughs> uh, if you're putting that up in there, you got some problems. So uh, as as many of you know, you want to actually let me put on a glove. I'm standing out of the way. Yeah, you should stand out of the way because you got your beautiful Batman shirt in there. Uh, I don't care about this. Is an old uh, Fallout. Vault 101 jumpsuit that I made uh, for Halloween one year and it, I you know made it in a hurry because I made one for myself and one for a friend of mine and this this uh, Do you want another glove? No, this glove is too slippery. Uh, you know, I always test out your tools folks uh, So that glove is too slippery, so we're not gonna use it and I'm gonna I'm just gonna be at peace with getting paint on my finger um, So I don't care that I get paint on this thing so I always make sure you know, you want to paint somewhere that's uh, well ventilated. We're in a nice, big, airy studio, and we're not going to be doing much painting, so this is okay. So shake it up really good and hold it out a little bit and give it some squirts. So you're not doing a whole bunch. No, I'm not doing a whole bunch because we're going to be covering most of this with other colors. Uh -huh. uh, I just want to take down the shininess just a little bit. And so that's going to dry. Okay. And we're going to do this in a we're going to do this in kind of a hurry. So normally I would just let that s sit there and let it dry because as it dries, it gets that lovely hammered texture. Yeah. And um, if you put it on too thick, that can interfere with the texture appearing. So that's we're just going to go we're just going to go straight in. So basically when you're layering colors, you want to go light to dark. Or no. Well, either Isn't it one, the other way, dark to light. You could do dark to light or light to dark. In in the case of um, in the case of rust and because we're in uh, Texas, I just went on a walk around my neighborhood and I found a field full of disused uh, farm equipment mm -hmm. and so there was all these rusty things around. And what I noticed is that the uh, the darker part of the rust tends to be on the raised surfaces. So if there's like a seat or or a, um, a corner, like on the very corner where you think it would normally be yeah. light because people have been touching it or it brushes up against things, it's actually dark and that's because it's just been sitting there. So in the case of rust, I li I, I personally like to go light to dark. Okay. But so in other whoops, in other uh, in other uh, uh, applications, you want to go dark to light. So this is going to get a little more of a we're going to do a couple of different uh, sh um, couple of different applications. So we're going to start we're going to start with uh, the light lightly textured stuff. And another thing that you can also do, and one of the things you can use that little hole for is you take a toothpick, you tie a, a thread at the center of the toothpick, and you drop the toothpick down in there, and then let it, let it dangle so that it, it, so it goes in like this, and then when, it, when it's in, you jig a little bit so it comes out like that, and then you can, it, you can hold it and, and suspend your project while you're spray painting. And that uh, keeps fingerprints. keeps fingerprints from uh, marring your paint job. So you can see that's already starting to look a little kind of rusty. rusty. Yeah, and as it dries, it will dry into this, um, it'll dry into this kind of, of shade and, and texture. So we could go with the same texture, a uh, slightly darker, but I think we're just gonna, we're gonna jump straight into the fun the stuff. The fun stuff, which is, uh, it's called stone textured finished. Hey, that's my texture. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So I don't understand. Thank you. <laughs> Duh. Okay. Also, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, so uh, this this cap, you see these two little things here? They're there for you to grip them. So you just squeeze it and it comes right off instead of having to struggle with it uh, the way that I've been doing this whole time. <laughs> Brilliant, Michelle. Brilliant. <laughs> We're professionals. Yay. So you can see, normally I would wait until the uh, other colors, uh, until the other colors dried, but uh -huh. we're doing this in a hurry. And so you can see, you can see now like it's already starting to look, to look 
rusty, and you can see that the it original. Looks like it's really good. Yeah, you can see the the original shininess, the metallic is coming through. You can see the the hammered uh, color is, is showing through. So it, none of it is too shiny, or um, and uh, and it looks kind of old. So another thing that we're going to talk about, and normally, I would do this over the uh, spray painted stuff. But we're going to move this to the side, and we're going to bring out a new can, which is dribbling water. Sorry. It's OK. Uh, it's in order to show the way that I would finish this off. So what I've got here is uh, a, couple of different, uh, a couple of different colors of craft paint. And we're going to do what's called a color wash. A lot, of, a lot of what I do when I was, I was getting my undergraduate degree in theater, and I did uh, set design and uh -huh. costume design and makeup design. A lot of the set design tricks and stuff that for painting sets that I learned are actually uh, translatable. Uh, a lot of them are also used a lot by the um, mini painting. Is that juice? Uh, it's it's uh, we don't have any water, so I'm using green tea. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Secret there. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to do a color wash. So what you do is you lose a little bit of paint and a little bit of water, or in our case, green tea, and you mix it up so that it's a very wet consistency. It's very loose, and it's not like the normal kind of paint that you would see, right? And so what this is is it, it allows the color to run and gather into, um, gather into the crevices. And so the way that, because rust starts, in the crevices where get where water sort of collects and stays, and so what you do is um, you you just go like this, and you just let it just let it start. You to just collect. let it start to collect and run and and don't worry about where it goes. So you you can imagine what what this kind of what this kind of effect would look like on the other can once the other can is dry. It will. Um, it will enhance the uh, the. I mean, you could stop here and it would be fine. But uh, you know, uh, I've I got a lot of compliments on my original uh, Nuka grenade, and I didn't use a color wash in it at all. Uh, but what's what's really great is when you, you you kind of go the extra mile, and you do something that really punches it up. Yeah, you can fiddle Smudge with it. it up. Yeah, fiddle with it and let it run, and uh, and it'll it'll run, and the, the water will evaporate. The water will evaporate and and leave the color where it is. And one of the another trick that you can do is once you've got it all, once you've got it all, uh, that's not runny enough. Once you've got it all um, mixed up, if you're you're dealing in very small places, like for instance, if you're a miniature painting, if you play if you play like Warhammer 40k or whatever, uh -huh. um, you can add a little bit of dish soap to your color wash and it will still run and collect, but it'll kind of stay where you put it. But just a little bit of dish soap. That's, that's a little better. So dish soap is the secret ingredient to make it not quite so runny, but still what you need to get. Yeah, it, it, because when you're, when, you're, when you're looking, when you're, when you're talking about miniatures, you're, you have very limited real estate. Like, we don't care where this goes uh, ourselves. And like even if you if you can't you know if you if you can't uh, uh, get the spray paint, uh, you can do like you know various color washes. And again, I'm I'm going over color after color without waiting for it to dry because we are not. Uh, we don't have the time. We don't have yeah. Right. We, this isn't a with the magic of television. A roast is already done. No, we're not. That's not the. Yeah, we're actually showing you right now what to yes. do. But you would want this to dry. You would want the, each color to dry before you did the next color. So just a little bit of paint. So how long does the color wash take to dry since you're watering it down? Um, I would say about half the time, it, well, especially if you've got like a fan on it or something, like half the time it takes whatever the paint you have to dry. That looks really disgusting. It does look really disgusting. I squirted some brown into some green tea and it was not good. So I'm going <laughs> to, that's not good. It gets. So yeah. Now I can see where on that can it would definitely be highlighting the because 
with the texture on it, you can't really see like the ridges or the grooves, mm -hmm. but especially with that texture, the wash would like get stuck in their cracks mm -hmm. and crevices and it would really make it pop. So yeah. I understand. And you can see how at the very, at the very bottom, how it's sort of collecting yeah. right there in that seam. Um, and that's the kind of thing that you, you, you want to go for because that's what happens with actual uh, rust, which you would find out by, you know, Googling rust with safe, safe search on because I forgot and I found horrible uh, pictures I've, of the Tin Man from Wizard of Oz. Yeah, I've fallen <laughs> for that when I needed to find a picture of uh, Dirty Harry. Yeah, it did, don't. <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, but anyway, making things. So, um, so color washes and spray paint uh, and... If you if you wait to dry and combine the two, you will end up with a, a, a pretty great thing. So in the next episode, uh, I will have one finished and uh, we'll start another project. So you can see the end of this project and the beginning of the next, which will be painting on plastic. Woohoo! Stay tuned.